na mana, e na reo, e na haui fa. Te na koto, te na koto, te na koto katoa. I would like to acknowledge the mana whenua of na ti fatua orake, kaumatua otere rewiti, Zella Morrison and her whanau, and express my deep and sincere thanks to you for welcoming us all here today. I would also like to express my deep gratitude and thanks to Kamatua John Retimana of Ngāti Whātua for supporting Payments NZ and accepting the welcome on all of our behalves here today. What a truly moving and powerful opening that was. I hope everyone got some meaning and purpose out of that today. I welcome you all here to our fifth biennial Payments New Zealand Conference, The Point 2022. Nā mihi nui, kia koto, katoa. This is the first time we've been together as an industry for four years. And a lot has certainly happened in those four years since our last conference. We've been living in a time of great change. A time of change that we've never experienced before over those last four years has been absolutely unprecedented. The pandemic, climate change, conflict, political division, social cohesion, the economy, culture change, just to name a few. These things are all conflating and are being shaped and amplified by technological change. Now, the impacts are being felt globally across most industries and communities. And people the world over are reassessing and reflecting on what they want, need and value. Spending more time with family, focusing on our health and well-being being more environmentally conscious, being more socially conscious, and considering what we're going to be leaving to the next generation. Businesses are going through the same reassessments of how to be more environmentally and commercially sustainable, how to deliver more value and innovative solutions to customers, juggling technological advancements that are hard to keep pace with and even harder to keep safe from cyber threats, whilst keeping on top of compliance requirements and regulation. As a payments industry, where have we been four years from the point 2018? Our conference theme back then was shaping a connected future that counts. Our theme today is reframing the future. Now when I look back and considered where we are now in this time and in this place, especially here at Tamaki Paonga Hera, the Auckland War Memorial Museum, I certainly feel a great responsibility as the Chief Executive of Payments NZ for ensuring our payments ecosystem is world class with progressive and innovative offerings that supports our nation's aspirations, both for those who are here now and for future generations to come. Now we know payments is the bedrock of the economy. It's the ultimate transfer of value. And we know also that without a safe, trusted, open and innovative payment system, Aotearoa cannot truly thrive in a digital age and achieve our digital strategy for this country. So, how do we create a level playing field? Take away the systemic constraints that hold us back and create an equitable and inclusive system for consumers and businesses in Aotearoa. Now, a lot of people talk about how, as a country, we were once world leaders in payments, and there is certainly frustration that we may have fallen behind across the board. So I really challenge you to channel that frustration into not what we should have been doing, but collectively what we can and should be doing from here, from this place. This year at Payments NZ, we've been reflecting and spending a lot of time on what the future looks like for us where we can add the most value to the industry and what type of system we want to enable and support to evolve, grow and thrive. That is why we have set a new vision for Payments NZ. World class payments for Aotearoa. No need to applause. I know it was, that was impressive, but that's okay. <laughs> Thank you. Now, our new vision speaks of our aspiration to drive world class payments outcomes for all that benefit all of Aotearoa. We want to ensure financial well-being and equity. We want to drive a more productive economy. 
We want to drive world-class payments network and encourage greater innovation, competition and, importantly, participation. We see our role as one of empowerment, fostering and leading our industry into the future, enabling the transfer of value through a safe and trusted payment system and having transparent and very inclusive governance. By being an authoritative industry voice on payments, ensuring that we have the right sized and balanced outcomes across policy development and implementation, both at an industry level and with regulators. We can drive a collaborative, open and innovative payments network, but we need to do that together. Now, last year, we sent a reviewer out that interviewed a large number of people uh, across the industry about the things they want to see Payments NZ doing more of and how we can strengthen our leadership and support for the Payments Network. That feedback has really powered this vision and strategy work and is also going to see us over the next year look closely at our governance structures and the way we work and make changes that will enable our vision and purpose to come to life and thrive. Now, these last couple of years, Payments and Debt has been working hard with the industry, keeping the system safe, interoperable and efficient. I just want to touch on some of the significant changes to our core system that are occurring at the moment and that are going to be going live in the next six months, or sorry, in the first six months of next year. Good old ISO 20022. Now, that is definitely the most significant change to the core payment system messaging in the high value clearing system, which transacts about $5 trillion per annum. Things like buying a house, large trade deals, those sorts of things. So, ISO 20022 for RTGS systems, including our high value clearing system, is set to go live globally in March next year. And just consider that change on such a global scale is absolutely unprecedented. In recent times, and I can't remember when, that we have spent thousands and thousands of hours from our high value participants and also the Reserve Bank here and Aotearoa have gone into delivering this project. We had delivered on time, we now know that's been pushed out until March. But when we think globally, I can only imagine what SWIFT, central banks, payment associations such as ourselves and other financial institutions have put their time into that. It is absolutely immense. So I would like to take the opportunity to sincerely thank all of those who were involved in the significant project across Aotearoa for their dedication, expertise and effort. Thank you very much. It's been a huge effort and we got there. Now, another core payment infrastructure project we've been working on behind the scenes is moving our settlement before interchange, the retail payments clearing the settlement system. Now, that transacts about $1.6 trillion a year from being open only five days a week to being open every day of the year. SBI 365, as it's so affectionately known across the industry, is due to go live in April 2023 across all of our BEX participants. And I'm really excited about what that's going to mean for the economy, moving from five to seven days, how that money's going to go through the economy and commerce. And I'm also most looking forward to what this will mean from a financial wellbeing and equity point of view over time. Now, in our recent consumer survey, which will be published after the conference, um, in a series of questions around financial resilience, 47% of survey respondents self-identified as finding it difficult to pay for necessary living expenses over the last 12 months. 47%. To sort of reflect on that for a moment in terms of the responsibility we have in improving that outcome for New Zealand. With SBI 365, there will be no core system constraints for payments over the weekend or on public holidays, meaning for so many struggling Kiwi and businesses, they can get paid every day of the year. That's a great outcome. We've also been working hard to lead our TRO's open banking future through our work in the API Centre. Open banking gives power back to the people through fast, secure and user-friendly data and payment services using the APIs. Certainly our ecosystem is maturing here in Aotearoa. Our third party and API provider community has grown this year quite significantly. And more and more businesses are exploring the opportunity of using the industry API standards and wraparound services of the API centre. Now we've recently incorporated implementation powers to mandate provider readiness and we'll be working on setting the first of these early next year, or during next year, sorry. We're starting to see more partnerships and products and services come to market. Now, I know, of course, 
there is always more work to do in this space, and we have a busy few years ahead of us keeping our API standards and services market ready and incorporating in due course the consumer data right. Now tomorrow there's going to be a panel on open banking and the team will share more about our work in this area at that session. Now we've also started our real-time payments capability discovery journey. Now we do know that a modern, adaptable, real-time infrastructure has the potential to deliver a truly resilient, open and inclusive payments landscape for the benefit of all in Aotearoa. We know that real-time enabled systems have the ability to not only provide value, that is dollars in the account in real time, but can also support much richer flows of data and payments innovation, and much greater potential for innovators to access and build products and services that provide enduring benefits to our people, community, and our businesses. Now, tomorrow our team will be taking delegates through that journey, and over the next year, we'll be getting out and about to engage broadly on the topic and working with decision makers to get them decision ready on this next generation payment strategy. It's important we make the decisions at the right time, at the right pace. So, over the next two days, we're certainly gonna be traversing many topics that are on our collective radar, as well as leading edge thinking and areas that are influencing the future of payments. So I ask you just to open your mind, be courageous and ask those big questions of yourselves and of your organisations. How will the future of payments look different to what it is now? And how will we collectively meet the future needs of Kiwi and support their financial wellbeing? Really important outcomes we need to deliver. I would also like to thank all of our speakers that have come from all around the place. Now we have speakers from the UK, we've got them from the US, Australia, Asia, Europe, not to mention Wellington and Auckland. And so they've really pulled that rabbit out of the hat. I would also like to acknowledge and thank the Honourable Minister David Clark, the Minister of Commerce and Consumer Affairs, Karen Silk, Assistant Governor of the Reserve Bank, and Dr John Small, Commissioner at the Commerce Commission, for being with us and for sharing their policy and regulatory views, aspirations and expectations of our industry. And of course, got to thank the sponsors. What an awesome lineup! Look at those. Look at them, aren't they, aren't they great? I'd like to acknowledge Swift, MasterCard, FIS, Worldline, Buttle Finlay, ACI Worldwide, EY, ICBC, Accenture, Middleware Group, and PayEd. A big thanks for the support you've given the point 2022, and I know that you'll really get great value from doing so. Thank you very much, we couldn't do it without you. I also wanna thank all of you delegates for the support of Payments NZ and taking the time out during your busy work and, and uh, personal lives to live and breathe payments over the next two days. I'm looking forward to catching up with you all during the course of the day and of course into the evening. Now on that, now we've got a fabulous evening lined up for you, apart from nice food, we've got a dinner speaker, we've got a band. So just think not only can you live and breathe payments during the day, you can party payments in the night. So that's gonna be pretty cool. So thank you, look, I'll come to a close now and I'd just like to speak to a fitting whakatauki, a proverb that I believe sums up the challenges and aspirations that we need to embrace as an industry. Whaia te iti ka orangi, kei te tuo hui koe, mi hei moanga te ite. Seek the treasure that you value most dearly. If you bow your head, let it be to a lofty mountain. Now I think this speaks of perseverance, of endurance, refusing to let obstacles get in your way while striving to reach our collective goals and pursuing our collective destiny. Nō reira nā mihi, nui ki a koto, tēnā koto, tēnā koto, tēnā koto, katoa.